This is Wake News Radio with Detlev on UWS Community Radio and the International Community Radio Network. Detlef of Wake News Radio, Wake News TV, here on our special broadcast, special TV broadcast um, on Saturday, uh, November 16th. And I've uh, got uh, two lovely ladies here next to me. Um, and we've got uh, Melanie Richan here today. Yes, hello. Thank you for this interview. Yes, and uh, this lovely lady here is from Di England, is that right? Yes. Or from the, from, the, from the UK, really? We're from the UK. My name is Diane O'Donnell, and I'm here with um, ISAC.org. And nice to talk to you. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, well, well they had to travel here, yeah, uh, obviously, uh, to Basel or close to Basel, where we are broadcasting this, uh, uh, this show here today. And uh, they actually came from Geneva. Which is also in Switzerland, by the way. <laughs> yeah, just for international audience. Uh, they may uh, be a little confused. Basel, Switzerland, Geneva, where are we? But, uh, you know, in Switzerland, the UN is also uh, residing in, uh, in Geneva. So you, you're trying to lobby um, for your organization. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you're doing mm -hmm. and explain to us uh, what you were doing in Geneva and uh, give us some more of the information necessary. Yes, of course. So uh, my name is Melanie Fritschen, uh, as uh, we just said, and I'm the public, event, uh, public relations and events manager of the European Coalition Against Covered Harassment, which is the organization I'm going to present today, uh, which is committed to raising awareness to the legal systems as well as to the medical and scientific community uh, to the crime of illegal, uh, illegal um biomedical research and also weaponary res research committed on uh, citizens in the European Union and beyond. And this is the reason we have been uh, here this week, because we met uh, with the World Organization Against Torture, which is the, um, an international coalition uh, uh, bringing together ov over 300 uh, non-governmental organizations. Uh, wow. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a big uh, network. Uh, fighting against torture, summary executions, and uh, enforced dis disappearance, and as well as other cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment or punishment. This is the reason for us being here in Geneva today. Now, UCASH is an organization. Um, can you explain a little bit more what uh, where your origins are from? I mean, uh, how did you get together? How did you um, um, establish? Yes, in fact, we are all, um, except for our legal advisor, Dr. Henning Witte, which uh, you had interviewed already uh, together with me um, some time ago, uh, we are all victims of electronic terrorism. And we felt that uh, it was really necessary to uh, create a coalition fighting this crime because uh, this is a crime that is exponentially on the rise. Um, and uh, also the, the victims, unfortunately, get younger and younger. So we got together and founded it uh, as a um, not-for-profit organization in June in Stockholm. Uh, the uh, managing director is um, the Swedish, uh, a Swede called Magnus Olsen, Swedish activi activist also. Uh, we have a doctor, uh, Dr. Ronnie Kilde. Um, then Dr. Henning Witte is our legal advisor and lawyer. And, and myself, who's taking care of the public relations side. And, um, and we really are committed to raising awareness for this crime, and also ultimately we would like to have um, appropriate EU legislation to be created to 
uh, to protect our citizens from these kinds of uh, intolerable abuses. So this is the reason we founded it. Yeah, and uh, this is true. Uh, we had uh, you and Dr. Uh, Witte uh, recently in German, actually. So um, if anybody is interested here, we'll give a link later on to this video. Now, this all sounds um, pretty weird for many people because they say well, electronic harassment doesn't exist, does it? 9-11 doesn't exist, <laughs> things like that. But we are actually revealing truth, and uh, that's our main objective. And um, you are not a state organization or anything like that. You are basically a victim. You are all victims, sort of. Right? Yes, we are all victims of electronic terrorism, because this is terrorism to do this to a person, to implant a person with uh, um, yeah, non-technology, implant technology, and then it is torture, it uh, must be said, to be torture the person remotely, to, um, to do this against uh, their consent uh, on top of it. So, uh, as I said, this crime is really exponentially on the rise and we really um, decided it was necessary to found this organization to, to fight this. Um, now, the first question which comes to my mind is, why would they do this mm. to people? Why? What's the reason for that? Uh, do you have a clue? I mean, do you have an understanding of what the purpose of uh, this electronic harassment could be? Yes, I mean, this, uh, this kind of technology, implanting you with this technology, is that uh, it leads to complete control over the individual. So um, it is a technology that connects to your central nervous system. And um, uh, you can be really uh, remotely controlled like a robot almost. It's, this is uh, human uh, robotization. Um, it is not new. I mean, electronic uh, implants is not new. Actually, they have existed uh, at least since the 60s. And last time uh, we spoke about this famous um, experiment of, this of Dr. Delgado, who was a psychiatrist at Yale University, who implanted, I think it was already beginning of the 60s, um, a fighting bull with electrodes and could really guide him uh, or let's say control him like like a toy, <laughs> you know, uh, and stop uh, his aggressions uh, right away. So this is a control tool, and it leads to ultimate control uh, over the individual, over the victim. So basically, if we put this together with all the other information we are collecting, also on Wake News or Wake News Radio, Wake News TV, is that there is a very influential group working behind the scenes, interested to get us all under control, not only financially, right, but also by yeah, uh, trying to put a electronic uh, device into us or try to bombard us with waves or frequencies which are harming us, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, that is the other side of it. Many of victims of these technologies, not only they get implanted against their consent, uh, but then uh, they experience also what is <laughs> the reason we've been here in, uh, in Switzerland this week, really torture, which means that uh, this is illegal weaponry, t weaponry testing, and they're hit then by directed energy weapons, as you, as you just said. And uh, so it is a control tool, a torture tool, and it can also be used of, uh, it brings the, the health of the, the, the victim in grave danger, and it can also be used to assassinate you remotely. So it's a um, weapon of Tough mass stuff. Destruction. Yeah, it is, Tough indeed. Tough stuff, right? Yeah. So we all have to be aware of that, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean? <laughs> That's why <laughs> <And> we're here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, if people are interested now in, in learning more about this, how can they reach you? Do you have a web address uh, which you can um, put forward to our audience? Yes, uh, they can go on ucatch.org, so E-U-C-A-C-H.org. And uh, we, they can find more information about um, this, wh what we're doing, about this crime. And um, there's also contact uh, email if people want to contact us. And if you feel that you're uh, targeted with this kind of technologies, weapons, uh, because <laughs> there are very many people, in fact, uh, falling victim to this, uh, you can also become a member with, with UCATCH. Um, so and our membership is also 
uh, very, very exponentially on the rise. Uh, so um, that gives us an indication how many people are actually uh, actually member uh, vi victims of this um, of this terrible crime. Yeah. So the members um, are finding you, and uh, the number of uh, um, you know followers is increasing. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but uh, people can support you as well. I mean, you're non a non-profit organization, but people c should and can. I mean, not everybody can, but mm -hmm. who can uh, should support uh, also this uh, organization. How can they do this? Yes, you can donate uh, to UCATCH. Uh, so we have now also a donate button. button. Okay. And if you want to, to donate uh, to, to our efforts, um, then <laughs> we certainly welcome that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now we get to the issue that uh, you're not only collecting information, you're not only a victim talking about what happens to you and analyzing what is uh, happening to others, but you're also trying to do something about it. Yes, and um, I'm uh, happy to turn now to my right, to your left, I guess, <laughs> from the camera, and um, uh, talk to Diane. Uh, Diane, um, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit and how you got uh, to this organization. And um, I think you are a specialist uh, also uh, within this organization. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not asking too many qu technical issues now, but obviously. But but you are uh, sort of uh, overseeing uh, the technical uh, stuff as well. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, Diane, maybe you just uh, talk about okay. what, what you Well, um, I myself have been a victim of this for, since about 1998. Um, I went through many years of absolute terror and pain and uh, trying to understand what was happening, and uh, as most of us do, it takes a few years before you sort of realize there's patterns and it's a system and it's very frightening, the effect at first of how on earth can people be reading my mind or... Uh, creating these sensations and bombarding me with uh, these pains and it's very like you feel like an electric current is in your body um, and total strangers seem to know all the details of your life and every conversation you have and it's very disturbing so so essentially what happens during the early phases is that you end up isolating yourself losing contact with friends um, uh, gradually at a certain point you realize there's patterns or you decide as I did that I was going to, to try to learn more about how it's working and yeah. see what I could do to, to survive it myself. Okay. Um, it was only about a year ago, a year and a half ago, that I actually found isac.org online oh. after searching to, to find out about um, uh, different, what it was and all of that. Um, ISACT appealed to me right away because of the fact that they do preliminary radio frequency scanning and that they take this from a different point of view from ISACT. Their point of view is to try to find some kind of proof mm -hmm. of electronic, what is being done to us. Basically it was set up about three years ago by Jesse Beltran and Dr. Hall who is the man who actually came up with the uh, using a frequency scanner to try to see if there were radio frequency emissions coming from the human body because so many people had come forward and complained. And um, so then uh, with Jesse and with Lars Trudgard, who is uh, our main EU um, representative and um, person who mainly did the, the scanning in Europe, um, they set it up and they, they went forward with developing a three-phase testing system to see if they could bring some kind of proof or find correlation, uh, find the smoking gun that might blow this open. So um, essentially what I've been doing is with the phase one, Lars trained me how to do this. I have a radio frequency scanner. Um, yeah, why don't you show it uh, to the camera? Okay, uh, basically this is a simple radio frequency scanner yeah, um, maybe I'll, I'll hold it for and you. I, I have a little um, MP3 speaker attached to it because generally when I'm using and I'm scanning a person, this particular model does not have a very strong sound. When I do a scan of a victim, I videotape it so that I can mm -hmm. um, later have a record and analyze and see where I, I find a positive radio frequency emission from a particular mm -hmm. narrow focal point on the body. So the speaker is really just there as a function for me uh, when I'm videotaping. So I use this and I uh, would have the wand fully extended and I just would do a general sweep on the person of the mm -hmm. body and see if I'm picking something up. And then we check, we check it again quite a few times and ask the person to move. So essentially what we do then is we provide the person with a short report if we have findings. 
and a letter to explain what ISAC does. Um, now that would be the phase one. Phase two is. So, but but let me ask again. Yeah. So you you you're basically using this device mm -hmm. on a person on, mm -hmm. on, a, on, on a human, on a body. human body, and you can track a frequency which is being emitted from the body or which is reaching the body. Um, it's coming from the body. Generally, okay. what we do is we calibrate this down to the point where in, in, in the area, if you're sitting here, I would check the area first and try mm -hmm. to, especially at a particular level, if I'm starting at your head, because um, there's so many, there's a frequency soup everywhere nowadays. So we just calibrate it down so we're not getting a reading. And then I would um, point it at a particular spot on you and see if I'm getting a flicker of a reaction. So what we say is we're not saying we find implants because we don't know that until if you have obtained medical imaging, which is our phase mm -hmm. two, is to try to get people to see if they can get an MRI scan or a CT scan or um, high, high um, resolution digital X-ray or something that might actually show if there's an implant or okay. something. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, it's to say, well, it's not natural for the human body to emit uh, radio frequencies from a narrow focal point. Yeah. Uh, you would have a static electric, natural mm -hmm. body electric. Mm -hmm. So um, that is yeah. an indication. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and as uh, many, many people have come forward and, and asked for this, mm -hmm. um, to find some way, it's, it might not be solid proof or evidence, but what it does is it gives you, for me, it gave me such a sense of relief to say, I know, I knew I wasn't crazy. And when I met with these other, my fellow <laughs> friends and coworkers uh, from ISACT, I felt really, uh, relieved um, and very happy to know that there was other people who were victims but who were also just trying to find a logical way with steps to to find proof and to do something about it and I immediately said yes I want to get involved because uh, nobody's going to do it for us it's a it, it's a very unique experience mm -hmm. you and uh, telling anyone that you maybe have voices or think somebody's reading your mind would immediately put you in a label of schizophrenia so yeah uh, You're a madman or mad woman. Yes, right? exactly. But with the rest of the um, symptoms, a lot of people complain of dizziness, vertigo, the feeling of this electric current through your body. Yeah. Um, for the auditory symptoms, you can have clicks. You get a, a very stubborn tinnitus, mm -hmm. and it's controlled quite often with this feeling of these surges of electric in your body that's absolutely not natural. And uh, as a lot of us were in our mid-30s when this first happened, we've had enough life experience to know the difference. I was not like this the week before, and, and now I am. So you know it's not, you know, something was suddenly done. And um, there's also a correlation between many people who have had operations that they report to us, and then suddenly these symptoms start. So we do believe there is um, a correlation between medical staff being involved in doing this and I believe that part of it is also research. Mm -hmm. And they are obtaining data and learning from what they've done to all of us non-consensual victims. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is actually learning to build for the brain project and some of these other projects that are going on. If you look at any research on the internet now, and there's a vast amount, and the companies don't even hide it, they're all proud of it, because yeah. they present it as if this is going to be so good for, uh, for the future for humans, and we're going to make paralyzed people walk. And but on the downside, mm -hmm. I mean, how are they learning this? You don't learn that from a mouse. You don't, you don't do these, uh, they have these articles about how now they've uh, tracked how a, m a mice dream. Uh, I mean, I don't think so. I think it's humans. <laughs> I think we are the mice and the guinea pigs. Um, so it's quite shocking. Um, yeah. it's, uh, it's a broad subject, that's the problem also. Diane, I think, I think uh, what we all learn is uh, that uh, there are covert techniques being used on us in many perspectives, not uh, only the ones which you are investigating, but also, mm -hmm. you know, through food, mm -hmm. through vaccinations. That, that is um, actually one very disturbing point, is that also, as the victims in the beginning seem to be about 70% were, were over the 30, they were older people, and a lot more women, now it's really growing exponentially that we're getting younger people. I'm finding people come to me and they want a preliminary scan and they're in their 20s. So possibly they've already experienced symptoms for, for seven years. 
maybe just one year, it varies all over the place, but we also have children that have been scanned and um, there's, uh, that's very disturbing. It's because then um, it seems to me they're moving forward and are they already planning on implanting everybody? And that just sounds like conspiracy theory when I say something like that. But I think people wouldn't be coming to us and people all over the world having the same symptoms. And um, it's, it is, it's worldwide. And so you really, there, there is a pattern. We are, we are not obtaining the solid proof we're not quite there, but that's why we are trying to appeal to some of these human rights organizations, other groups, and work with them and hopefully um, get some extra support because we're just victims. We don't have money. We don't have facilities. There's a lot of, a lot of things we need uh, help with to bring this out because uh, I think it will explode even more. So that means basically the big money is interested um, in yeah, changing human mankind. I believe so. I do believe it's to do with the singularity and all the, the cybernetics projects because when you read what's behind them mm -hmm. and they seem to love the idea of being able to control people um, and I do, obviously they would see a profit in that and all these data collection people everywhere now and it, it must be great for them. I feel sometimes it's used for advertising too. Um, yeah, they are, they are planning on face scanning as well and uh, if you enter uh, one of your... Um, major multiples in, in the UK, which would that one be? Like, um, um, what's what's the major uh, trade chain, chains? Oh, in, well you've uh, got like, like your supermarkets, you've got supermarkets. like Tesco's and yes, Sainsbury's. So Tesco would like to scan you while you're entering uh, their shop and then take a scan of your face and immediately know what you like. Uh, face recognition, are face you saying? Okay, I haven't heard that one, but yeah. um, there's, uh, f yes, the technologies are becoming more and more invasive. I mean, it's yeah. just, n and but the main point is that they're not giving any of us a choice, are they? I mean, we none of us had a choice in any of this that happened to us. And yeah, uh, I mean, we have a choice, and that's what I'm uh, proposing all the time, uh, refuse <coughs> the system, boycott yes. the system. Uh, try not to uh, to purchase uh, in those major multiples if they do harm to you, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. You have a consumer choice, but um, to be implanted, these, these really intrusive um, weapons or whatever you want to call them, they're certainly, if it's, it, they are being used as weapons against us, but uh, I think they get presented as something else, obviously, because a lot of people find us ridiculous and don't understand or... <laughs> You know, they say, how can you be tortured? You're, you're walking around, you look normal and fine. You know, I don't have an arm hanging off, uh, something like this. So for a lot of people, it's difficult to understand. But um, yes, uh, I don't know. The whole direction of, of all this research and technology, it, it just seems um, totalitarian is the only way I can put it. Yeah, I mean, we are back to the Third Reich, uh, Third uh, Empire. Or, sort of, or sort of. perhaps Joseph <laughs> Stalin, because he was in love with um, psychiatry as well, and the, anyone who was uh, ever complaining about the state or protesting was immediately sent to a psychiatric center, weren't they? So there is a... Yeah, that sounds a little bit like uh, a clone between those two. Right? Mm, yes. Adolf and uh, Joseph, mm -hmm. both together. Okay. Now, uh, Melanie, um, did you... Well, when you were discussing this in Geneva... Mm -hmm. Were those people you were talking to, those organizations, uh, aware of uh, what you're talking about? Uh, well, um, I think they were a little aware, but uh, they told us that uh, mostly we they were becoming aware um, more and more of this new form of torture, which is modern form of torture, uh, via us, in fact. So um, I think they appreciated that we gave them all this information. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we also then uh, explained to them where we, we would need their support. And not only the World Organization uh, Against Torture, there are uh, organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, um, right. you know, uh, other human um, rights organization. Because we have actually um, addressed uh, the European Parliament um, with uh, a proposal for uh, a law, in fact, uh, an EC regulation. And I would just like to, to read this to uh, maybe our, our viewers. It's a proposal to uh, concerning weapon system operating on new physics principles 
used to torture or inflict other cruel, inhumane and degrading treatment, including, but not limited to electronic weapons, electro magnetic weapons, magnetic weapons, directed energy weapons, geophysical weapons, wave energy weapons, frequency weapons, genetic weapons, scalar weapons, psychotronic weapons, chemical aerosol weapons, implant weapons, nanotechnology weapons, high frequency active auroral high altitude um, ultra low frequency weapons and information technology weapons. All this array of new weaponry is uh, used against defenseless citizens uh, um, against their consent. And uh, what to to say that uh, what um, to add what uh, on what uh, Diane just said is that indeed the victims are getting younger and younger, and um, it is true that uh, either they are had surgery when when we asked them, or it was via vaccine vaccine, or also the children often via the dentist when they go to the dentist appointment, uh, they are implanted there and then so, um, tortured by this uh, by this weaponry. And uh, we really feel that um, because these technologies are not at all regulated uh, and we want to achieve um, a ban on, in the EU at least, on any weaponry that enables the manipulation of human beings. And uh, so I think um, uh, they understood the, the necessity for this and we hope we will get their support. Yeah, let's hope, uh, because we need all the support uh, we can get, and um, uh, matrix media, as I call them, not mass media, mm -hmm. matrix media, they are not really revealing anything of that uh, or talking about it, because it is um, a non-topic. Is that correct, uh, Diane? Do you have this impression also when you look upon uh, media in the UK? Yes, absolutely. All you get is the, the positive spin on things, um, even, for instance, something like the smart meter, which they're trying to introduce yes. forcibly to everyone in England. And there's been some very good um, documentaries made about it and the effects And in America, what's happened, uh, just they can break into your property and forcibly change your meter. And actually, it's being upheld because of basically the the power companies lobbies with the local governments and that's that's how they're getting away with it you would think this is crazy when i when i saw the footage i, I actually was quite shocked but to me this is just another symptom it's not the same of, of what the the whole plan is and it's these energy companies and everyone and it's just a money game and they don't really care so with the government part of it and the media it's definitely, um, it's either just ignored, certainly this issue of implantation, of uh, energy weapons attacks, everyone just gets labeled as, as a conspiracy theorist. But um, I mean, as we know from, <laughs> certainly when I was living in America and George Bush called everyone a conspiracy theorist who didn't agree with his plans to invade Iraq. So um, luckily I do know there are enough citizens out there who do look beyond um, and will look to other news, uh, programs like yours or anything. I mean, most of us nowadays, I think people look for alternative sources of information in media, or you know you have to, even with the mainstream papers, you have to read about five or six of them to get the facts because they all have a slant. So, um, but certainly for, for a subject like this, I don't think the time has come yet, but I think it will. I think that um, just because there seem to be more and more victims, how are they ever going to pretend that it's not really happening at a certain point? You know, it's. I really um, can say that uh, regarding the. Uh, it's true that uh, the mainstream media uh, report very rarely on on these subjects, uh, and uh, it certainly uh, um, deserves much more attention. But uh, we have one positive um, uh, thing to say: uh, Russia Today, uh, actually, which is now the biggest media, uh, actually worldwide. <laughs> uh, um, has uh, a journalist called Daniel Esselin, who is uh, very famous uh, famous uh, for his work uh, on the Bilderberg Group, uh, has uh, recently interviewed uh, the UK um, managing director Magnus Olsen. Mm -hmm. I was just talking uh, talked about, and this was is really um, a mainstream um, uh, media. So we hope that this will um, lead to. Uh, further interest of, uh, of the mainstream media in the subject. Um, and I certainly hope that when uh, you realize, uh, when, when the public realizes how easy it is, in fact, to implant a person 
against their consent with this kind of technology. Um, basically, all you need is a needle. <laughs> Uh, an injection is sufficient uh, that then um, you can and then you can be uh, part of a scientific uh, experiment you, you're not even told about about or you know a member of your family it is very easy uh, that uh, this uh, the interest will rise and uh, that we can close this and, and bring this to an end yeah I'm also talking not ab about conspiracy but we are actually uh, conspiracy analysts because there is a, this proof that there are conspiracies taking place. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, that's the uh, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, even John F. Kennedy talked about this uh, before he, um, um, did he, did he commit suicide? <laughs> or was he suicide? Oh, no, no, he was murdered, really. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that was another story, right? Uh, the other ones, uh, okay. You know what I mean. So JFK basically talked about this in the press club in the Washington DC um, yeah a few months before he uh, died isn't that uh, funny that he was talking about this conspiracy of the military industrial complex um, to all the matrix media but he just didn't realize they are all in the boat so he talked to the wrong people but anyways I mean this is a long time ago uh, this is uh, public knowledge, so it's nothing which I invented or which is uh, conspiracy. It's actually, it, it happened. JFK was murdered, really. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you're talking about this. So, um, you have an impression that uh, the um, people uh, in Geneva understood what you were talking about? Yes, um, what I, she doesn't understand, the person that we spoke with was a bit confused about the actual technical side of it or the scanning, but was interested in learning. Um, I think they wouldn't have uh, invited us to come and explain it to us if they didn't have a genuine concern. So that was something that was very good. And I think it would probably take further meetings if we can get to that, I hope. And uh, we, we offered, we said, you know, if they would like to, to come forward. But I, I tried to stress myself just that I think that they will be finding more victims with these kinds of strange torture um, symptoms in the future. So that we, they really need to just start learning about it. But yeah. Now, how can people reach uh, the ICE Act? Um, Diane, uh, yeah. say, uh, uh, we have um, the website is um, www.icaact.org and we have a lot of information on there. There's um, videos of scan preliminary frequency scans that have been done. Um, there's a lot of history videos if people are interested in learning about the history of mind control and the experiments that have been done throughout the 50s. There's... Um, uh, there's very much information. We also have the report that we put out uh, in August, um, uh, the phase three report that was the first one of the scanning that was done in a shielded environment in a Faraday yeah. cage in Belgium. Why don't you show us the first page, the first page, or I the whole booklet, yeah, I to the um, camera? I brought a copy of the report for you, so you may have that. And there's also um, a DVD that goes with it. Right. And this report um, has basically the information about what happened was they used 14 people who had already done the phase one and phase two preliminary mm -hmm. parts of the scanning and, who came, and, up and who came up positive yeah excuse me and a control group of a few people as well yes. who were non-symptomatic and what happened was that during the scans in the Faraday cage they found that these people did come up again positive for radio frequencies within that shielded environment which indicates that they were emitting from the human body right. Um, and not from some other source, or so it was a it was a very good um, test, and it, it really brings up all the subjects of that why people should take it seriously, and we're not just waving some wand around and making up a bunch of rubbish. <laughs> so now a, a question comes to mind um, right here. Uh, now we all know we are being sprayed from the skies through chemtrails, there's this HARP facility, which is, uh, you know, confusing uh, the ion I ionosphere and what have you, um, with, uh, you know, terrible um, consequences. They're also spreading nanoparticles through the air. Now, how, how big in size 
would be such an implant? Do you have any any idea, or does do you have um, uh, more information on that? Well, the information basically what we have found that um, there's some people that have had them removed, but these would be the older style ones. So mm -hmm. in this report, there's a, an appendix which is Bob Larson. He was an inventor yeah. in David America. Larson. David Larson, excuse me. He he um, is a man who actually did sue and did have an implant removed. Now, the older ones used to be about the size of a grain of rice, and these would be the ones mm -hmm. like the very chips that, right. that you can see. There's actually, there is footage and information on the internet about that. It's not exactly uh, hidden. And um, the newer ones, is in, in this report, it even has some, as I don't think you'll be able to see it on the camera, some pictures of implants that have been removed, and they grow in and their flesh grows around them. So yeah. th it is available. Yes. So it would so be a nanotechnology type of thing? I mean, uh, very well, small? Well, if they're nano, I kind of suspect it would be very difficult to, to find them. And this is something that we uh, um, we need to work with some with scientists yeah. and other people who we really need some whistleblowers, I think, to come yeah. out and try to find a way. Because if, if it's not going to show up on a medical imaging scan, anything yeah. that you have, in particular if it's the newer ones, which we believe, you know, obviously fit through the eye of a small needle, right. uh, I don't really see how you're going to find that very well. They probably... But this is precisely the reason why, uh, in fact, it was Dr. Hall who's on our board, uh, on the ISAC board, started this new method, method of forensic uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, proof, uh, evidence, finding evidence, because uh, as Diane sa very rightly s uh, says, nanotechnology is almost it's not visible on, you know, on the currently medic m current medical imagery that we ca have avi available. So um, this is precisely the reason why we uh, have developed this uh, three-phase testing pro uh, protocol and why we do the scanning in the Faraday cage. Um, to prove that uh, yeah, these people are, are transmitting. Uh, it's not normal for the human body to emit radio frequencies. So. Now, there are lots of people in the world who are claiming to have a uh, specific new sort of um, sickness or disease uh, that would be Morgellons, called Morgellons. Is this uh, connected somehow to uh, this work you're doing? Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, I myself am a Morgellons victim. So, oh, uh, wow. yes. yes. So, Morgellons is a specific technology. It is uh, indeed a nanotechnology, a very sophisticated one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, um, the particularly yes, sign of this technology uh, is that it s once it's in your body, it self assembles and auto replicates mm -hmm. to build a com complex system of wiring uh, all over the body. So, <laughs> maybe for some of our viewers, that will sound science fiction, but this is is a technology that uh, was you know, funded and, and developed by DARPA mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Uh, the official name is Smart Dust. Uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that a nice name? Yeah. <laughs> it is not nice at all, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, so uh, um, it, it self-assembles and auto-replicates. It is a very, very in invasive technology. It leads to over to complete control on the, uh, uh, over the individual. And um, uh, it is uh, it is nanotechnology. So the smart dust victims, uh, this is definitely not a technology you can see on on a CT scan or an MRI scan. Yeah. It's very difficult. Okay, that was my question. So that is the next step, uh, technological advancement, which we have to take. Yes, I mean uh, that's going to be a real difficulty. Um, we don't really have a specific um, plan for that at the moment. We can still just do the the scanning as far as trying to see if there's emissions coming out. But I think that would be obviously if we can get assistance and carry on with um, the removal is obviously everyone's concern. Can we find it? Can we get the proof and with the medical imaging? Um, and I honestly I don't have the answer for that at the moment and until we can get some some help um, so, so if, to everybody listening now all the scientists and all the whistleblowers please come forward and help us help help those lovely ladies here in order to to make this advancement right absolutely that's what we do that is exactly what we need um, yeah. I don't really know what to say further than that because um, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we ourselves we are not are not uh, mm -hmm. the people who put them in, so we don't always have the answers. You know, this is sure. uh, we we learn as we go along and and try to find information. And sometimes when we w it's the useful thing about when we do s scanning phase one scannings and have meetings and we meet other victims, sometimes they have more knowledge than us and we share it. And it's it's also uh, 
to me, that's a really important side of this, actually, not even always mm -hmm. just with the, with the phase one scannings, because um, we have to work together and people have been led to, it's divide and conquer method and people to yeah. isolate and be afraid of it and paranoid of everyone else. And so we really work on trying to bring people together and, and um, find their own inner strength again to, to do something and to work with us. Mm -hmm. That's great. So uh, the, the third phase would be uh, then uh, what? The third phase is the Faraday cage one okay. that I spoke so about earlier. Okay. Yes. So that is the one where then we had the victims, as I explained yeah. earlier, who already tested positive in phase one. And then mm -hmm. we retest in the same manner, but inside the controlled environment so that we can be have a more specific, I mean, a more scientific um, result that really does prove it. It's not just any old Faraday cage. It's one that they had was specially um, constructed. constructed. Well, we had the use of scientists and people. Sure. Melanie is the one could, that could tell you that. And proper I was actually yeah. instrumental in, in finding this uh, research facility right. uh, in Belgium so that we could do the testing there. So the testing and is done in Belgium? Uh, until now, we have done it once. So yeah. uh, I think uh, ISAC is currently looking into uh, actually building ourselves uh, the Faraday cage so, so right. we can test more people. Uh, but this was in October 2012 uh, mm -hmm. in, in Belgium. Yeah. And I think it's important to say that maybe Diane did, I, um, I don't know, uh, that the people that we tested, the 14 people we tested that came up positive in the preliminary scan also came up positive in the exact locations also <laughs> of their body in the, in the Friday cage. And we had this control group that had no signs and symptoms of that are generally associated with electronic terrorism. And on the frequency uh, counter, that it was zero. We couldn't measure anything. So that, I think, we can. Con we have also the two um, doctors that are on our board, Dr. John Hall and Dr. Edward Spencer, who's a neuro neuroscientist, uh, have also signed the report. They, they consider it as conclusive as evidence. So. So that's uh, encouraging that people are actually trying to, to do something about this terrorism. Aren't we all fighting terrorism? We just have to define who the terrorists are, right? True? <laughs> yes, that is actually the difficult point. And uh, that's where you get into crazy conspiracy theories that there's a lot of things. Analysts. We are conspiracy <laughs> analysts. I'm not talking Diane. about us analysts. I'm talking about uh, a lot of people come and they ask us, do you know who it is? Is it, is it uh, the Illuminati? Is it this or that group? And I just say, forget that. We have to look for evidence and we have to get back down to earth and try to ignore the stories and, and think logically about your own case. What happened? Where were you at the time? When did it try to figure it out for yourself? The, really people have to take charge of their own, um, be your own detective. That's what I decided to do. I decided just to take notes, research, look, try to meet people. Um, it's, it's the only way we're going to get there and um, it will. Yeah, okay. So I think, uh, is there anything uh, you want to point out from your meeting or what you are planning to do? Because we are now getting to the end of this um, part of the broadcast. Uh, well, we need support. That's, uh, and uh, we have, and I hope this, this uh, broadcast will, and I would like to thank you again, will contribute to the fact that more and more people realize that uh, this is going on that it's a crime, that people are terribly tortured, uh, that I suffer, and uh, we hope that uh, we will get the support we need. We will certainly meet with more human rights organizations. And uh, until now we have been, I mean, UCATCH uh, exists uh, not for a long time, but we have been pretty successful, I think, to bring this to the attention of, of those in power, to members of the European Parliament and uh, uh, politicians that, that need to know that and that have the responsibility of doing something uh, against us and uh, we hope uh, we will succeed uh, and we will continue doing this until this issue is resolved. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, Melanie, and then uh, give us again uh, your contact address. Yes, ucatch.org, E-U-C-A-C-H.org. And anything else? Do, is there a telephone number? Or? I mean, not your private one. <laughs> <laughs> the official one. There is a uh, is an email uh, contact email on the on the on the website, so you can write to us, of course. I heard they are harassing you as well. You live in Br you live in Brussels, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, that is something uh, else. It's uh, the victims of these technologies also generally s uh, report or very often report that there are illegal entries into their home. 
their properties is ransacked. Uh, people are uh, stalked, but in groups of, of people, uh, harassed. So uh, I do not personally experience that, what we call organized stalking. But there have been often illegal entries into my home. Uh, my floor has been destroyed. My car has been vandalized uh, many times. I get anonymous uh, phone calls when then sub suddenly, suddenly somebody hangs up. Uh, there is uh, certainly, in, and this I would also call it's 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 uh, part of this uh, whole. It's also a form of torture, um, you know, uh, that the person never f feels safe, and you uh, you are constantly harassed in this fashion as well. So uh, that is also something we would like to to ask our politicians to look into, because uh, normally the the home <laughs> should be um, inviolable, you know. Home is the castle. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, those are dark forces. And these dark forces uh, usually are afraid of the light. And we bring some light into these uh, dark uh, ages, if you want to, or dark uh, uh, activities. Mm -hmm. So never be afraid. Always try to go public. So, you know, get in contact with Melanie or... Maybe with Diane. And Diane, you can say a few words uh, to that as well? Yes, absolutely. If you want to get in contact with us, you just go to our website at um, isact.org, I-C-A-A-C-T.org, and we have a contact page. Um, I'm uh, to be addressed through the UK email. Um, there's also one for EU, which is Lars, and for the USA, we have Jesse Beltran, who's the president. So if you're in any of those areas or any wherever you are, um, you can send us an email, ask us questions, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. But we are just um, <laughs> individuals. <so laughs> we're not always speedy, but we'll get there. And um, certainly, we love to hear from people. It's good. Maybe we should just add, sorry, <laughs> that yeah, we fine. just recently uh, did a, a scanning in Brussels mm -hmm. just to show the, 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 uh, the, pro the, the, the scope of the problem. And uh, as I said, uh, the victims go get younger and younger, and the also the rates are higher and higher that we found. And in this particular scanning, I think if it was right, Diane, we had a 100% positive. Uh, so wow, so that's, uh, that's uh, you know, quite something. Well, anyway, I mean, Lars and Jesse are regular um, uh, guests also on our United We Strike Radio Marathon, which is taking place every second Saturday in, um, in a month, right? So next one would be in in December, which date? I don't we know. We have it announced <laughs> always on the website. You can look. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. so you can also go to there's their respective re uh, websites and. Uh, and there's a link on the ISAC uh, website right on the front main page right. to the radio show, so that you can have the next date and you can click on it, or you can once it's been archived, you can download it if you like. So. Wonderful. Maybe we can uh, welcome you to uh, to one of those uh, shows once uh, again. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot uh, for listening to uh, our broadcast, which was a special broadcast here from uh, Switzerland. Um, you know, hosting these uh, two lovely ladies from ISAC and UCatch. Um, you know, trying to bring some light into the darkness and never be afraid. Okay. This is Detlef of Wake News Radio, Wake News TV. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Detlef, for this interview. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Community Radio and the International Community Radio Network.